You're listening to the best of the Martha Zoller Show. You can hear the show live Monday through Friday from 9 to 11 on AM 550 and FM 102.9 WDUN and streaming at accesswdun.com. You can find all things Martha Zoller at marthazoller.com. It is the Martha Zoller Show. We're so happy to be here with you today. And it is my honor uh, to talk today to Jenny Savidia, uh, who is a 41-year-old mother of two children who resides in central Israel. Uh, She has a master's degree in social psychology. On October 7th, she was at the Nova Festival with her partner, her younger brother, and his girlfriend uh, were also at the festival uh, Jenny and her partner survived, but her brother and her uh, brother's girlfriend were brutally murdered. Uh, less than two weeks after her brother was buried, she started volunteering at a healing center that holds support groups for parents, siblings, and friends of those who were murdered on and since October 7th. Jenny, thank you so much for giving us some time today. Hi. Welcome. Welcome. Um, I know this is very difficult to talk about, but I'm so thankful that you are are doing this because I think it's very important for us to hear the stories of the people that survived and not to forget those who didn't. And so tell us just a little bit about what that day was like for you on October 7th. Um. Actually, that was the first time ever uh, I watched a dark sunrise. Um, at around uh, 6.30 a.m. when Hamas started shooting missiles, not one or two, but hundreds of missiles, uh, me and my partner and my brother Shlomi and his girlfriend, Lily, we decided to wait at the parking lot um, for the missiles to be over. Uh, at some point, my brother and his girlfriend, Tommy and Lily, they decided to move back home. And me and Nam decided to wait uh, because there was still heavy traffic. Um, and uh, at some point, Hamas entered uh, the, the festival, started shooting people. Me and Noam ran for our lives. Um, and we started uh, running. We, started, we ran for about six hours. Uh, all this time, Hamas is shooting at us, throwing missiles, uh, grenades, RPGs, uh, all, all the missions you can think of. And um, at, at some point, Shlomi uh, let me know that he's okay. Uh, he asked me if I'm okay. I told him I'm fine. Um, kept on running. Um, I hid under a tree for five hours uh, while Hamas... Uh, uh, kept on shooting people uh, around me, uh, and uh, at around uh, nine fifteen a.m., um, I asked Shlomi again uh, if he's okay. I texted him, asked him if he's okay. He didn't answer, and I, all that time that I was running from Hamas, I actually thought about what happened to Shlomi. That was all that I was that I cared about. Um, Hamas is shooting at me, shooting at people around me. Uh, committing crimes that you can't even imagine, butchering people, raping women, burning bodies. And all I can think about is why Shlomi doesn't answer. So at some point, eventually, uh, we uh, encountered a, a police force that took us out of the battlefield. And I kept on looking for Shlomi. Uh, I refused to evacuate um, um, the place because I wanted to know what happened to my brother. Uh, For me, the worst case scenario was that he is wounded somewhere and we need to take him to the hospital. Uh, I refused to think of the possibility that he was murdered. Uh, So one of the policemen told me, listen, you need to go back home now because we are starting a curfew. Uh, and you, you won't be able to go home. So I um, thought about it, and so I don't have any battery. Uh, I was hungry. I was cold. I had no place to sleep. So I, I decided to, to move back home. Um, at that point, I told my parents, who had no idea 
me and Shlomi were at the festival. I told them that what happened, that I was on my way back home, but Shlomi doesn't answer. Uh, so we started to look for him and for Lily, his girlfriend. Uh, Lily has uh, twins, six-year-old twins. Um, and four days after, uh, October 7th, Lily's family got the notice that her body was uh, recognized, uh, that she was murdered. And we got the notice um, on Friday night that my brother was uh, murdered. Uh, till this day, we have no idea how it happened. Most families of the victims of the festival have no idea how they loved ones uh, were murdered because um, people escaped everywhere possible. Uh, so bodies were found all over the place, all over the area. And uh, because Hamas used different kinds of ways to butcher people, so, uh, so we, we have no idea how it happened. Um, so, Jenny, I mean, I can't even imagine uh, what that was like. And I guess... You know, with the rockets coming in, you noticed they were worse than usual, but this was not something that was unusual. You were used to rockets coming over, or was this something different? No, this was something totally different. Actually, at first, when the rockets, when the missile started, when the rockets started, uh, we weren't that panicked because we are used to that, to this kind of situation. So we just acted according to the instructions that we know. We stayed and laid it down on the floor and put our hands on our head uh, just as we are instructed. But soon enough, we realized it's not like uh, it's not like we are used to. Right. It's right. not one or two or three missiles. It was hundreds of missiles that looking back, the only uh, uh, the only reason they shot hundreds of missiles was to distract us from what they were what really they were doing, about to do which was yeah which was now, to butcher people yeah. since since their de- his death um you've helped other families um yeah tell us a little bit about that we've got about four minutes left yeah yeah um i'm a social psychologist so it was natural for me to uh combine my professional knowledge and my personal experience. Um, And I looked at my parents. Um, I saw um, the way they they, uh, got depressed. They they stayed at home. They they wanted no, they, they were, I don't even know. I'm I'm sorry. I'm so emotional. I'm I'm thinking of my parents. So, um, so Jenny, but, but that was my way. That was my way to help my parents. Absolutely, and that Jenny, was my way to help my parents. Yes. I think the most important thing is: what do you want people to know four months later, in the final minute and a half that we have? I want people to know that we, we uh, back in Israel, we are trying to, uh, you know, prevail. We are trying to, to arise from what happened. We, um, we take care of ourselves. We try to, to bring back our hostage. We need your support to do that. Uh, we are really trying to hang on, although what happened. Uh, a week ago, we planted trees. We planted trees to memorize all those who were killed. Um, uh, these are real people that died, real people that were uh, abducted. Uh, uh, we are not fake. We are real. Uh, people with families, uh, people that had babies, that had children. Great minds were killed. Lily was a doctor. Uh, Shlomi worked as a senior uh, software engineer in ServiceNow, which is an American company. I am a doctor candidate of gender studies. Great minds, parents. People that had lives were killed, were murdered, brutally murdered, and some of them are still in Gaza. 
Don't forget that, please. Don't forget. Jenny Savidya, um, I, we could spend all day with you, but I want to thank you for giving us this time because we are not going to forget here. And we appreciate what you're doing in your pain and the sacrifice that you are making. And we thank you and we stand with you. Thank you for being with me today. Thank you very, very much for the opportunity to, to speak. To hear the full versions of last week's Martha Zoller shows, go to the podcast page at accesswdun.com and you can follow me on social media at Martha Zoller.